We're gonna do a song that you never heard before. It's always amazing at the Academy that you encounter people who were really uh, significant in a certain period of uh, music uh, development. And uh, we are really happy to have you here today oh, well, as uh, somebody who can uh, bring us something like oral history about uh, the 80s in New York. And uh, let's start with uh, lesson one. Oh, okay. Well, this is, um, let's see, this is the first record that my friend Douglas and I made, and we made it as um, uh, a contest entry. Uh, a record label called Tommy Boy Records had uh, published an advertisement saying anyone can have a shot at remixing this record. Just take the record and make a mix of it, send it in, and we have an all-star panel of judges who are, will you know, drink beer, eat pizza, and listen to your music. And I was working in an advertising agency. It was a suit and tie sort of a job. And I came out of a meeting one morning, and I walked to my office, and my secretary was very excited. And uh, she said, you won that contest. You won that contest. And I said, yeah, yeah, Tommy Boy called, Tommy Boy himself. Said, really? Okay. So um, I went into my office, and I shut the door. I was like, and then I... Uh, I, I went to the phone and uh, I called him up. I said, hi, I, I got a message from you. Uh, my name is Steve Stein, and we had, uh, so we sent in a contest entry. Apparently, we won. He said, yeah, yeah, you won. Who are you? I said, well, you know, I'm a, I work in an advertising agency. He said, yeah, what, what kind of mixer has a secretary? And I, <laughs> he said, I called that other guy, and there's a receptionist. I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, we're like, you know, people. He said, yeah, why don't you come down to our office? I want to meet you. And so we, you know, we, we went down there that evening. Douglas was very excited. You know, he was just like all over. Hey, man, we won the contest. We won the contest. I said, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. So we, we went and um, sampling was so new that people didn't even understand how to license it. You know, uh, we... Tommy Boy, I think, tried to clear the payoff mix, and they sent copies of it to people who, I mean, there are 60 or 70 samples in there, and people were getting this, and they were listening to it and going, I don't understand, what do you want me to do? They say, well, what we want to do is we want to pay you money so that we can take, use your, the, the portion of your, of your record that these guys used so that we can put this out. And they're like, no, you're crazy. So we weren't the first people to do it to do it at all, but we were probably the first people to do it so much in such a small amount of time. And I started meeting people who said, "Oh yeah, I became a producer because I heard your records." Heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. You know, I went back to the hotel room and I called Doug. So you're not going to believe this story, man. <laughs> this guy became a producer because of our records. Can you believe that? Like, yeah. It was it was really nuts. It was crazy. You know, it was like um, because in my my regular life, I was just you know uh, you know I mean I don't look like anything. I'm a dumpy middle aged man. And all of a sudden, I could step through the mirror and it was like, famous. Famous. 